All right, things got a little bit heated up there with Overcooked 2 Game On session, but we're going to bring things back down, cool them off a little bit with our next speaker, Matt Dolanolinger, as he discusses enhancing a top-down game with URP 2D lights. Take it away. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so my name is Matt, and today I'm going to be talking about how to improve your 2D games using the Universal Render Pipeline in Unity, basically going over some like tips and tricks that the team put together to help everyone succeed at this. Uh, so again, I'll introduce myself and the team. As you can see, I'm, my name is Matt Donnellinger. I'm a developer advocate here. And then we have Russ, Guillaume, and Eduardo. They helped put the deck together, put the demo that you're going to see, and put all this information together for you. Uh, again, here's sort of what we're going to go over. We're going to talk about how to prepare your assets before you get them into the editor. So what you need to do with, the, with them before they get in the editor, what you can do in the editor. And then we're going to sort of bring it all together to show you a day-night cycle that they put together in a 2D game. Uh, the main reason we've sort of put this demo and we're doing this presentation right now is that we wanted to uh, promote this ebook. So this ebook, the team put together, and it has so many tips and tricks for 2D art and animation. It's available now online. It's free. I highly recommend checking this out if you have any interest in it. It's going to go into way more detail and more topics than I will in this presentation, but it'll be a great source of information for everybody. And so this is the sample farm game that we're putting together. Uh, currently, this is in development. Uh, later this year, it'll be made available to everyone, so you can, you'll be able to download it off of the Unity Asset Store, but this is what we're sort of going to be using as the reference for all the stuff I'm going to be talking about throughout the presentation. And then, yeah, let's sort of talk about preparing your art, so your pieces of art for your game and getting them in there. Uh, first, we want to start at the very beginning of your project. So one thing we, the team wants to call out is make sure when you're starting your project in Unity that you select 2D URP. This makes sure that the Unity render pipeline is already good to go, and it takes a lot of settings and, make, and sets them perfectly for a 2D game. A lot of times, teams will pick either 3D by accident or just 2D, so they won't get the same value, or they will have to go back in and change stuff later. By selecting this from the start, you save yourself a lot of time and trouble and headaches with it. And then here, a lot of what I'm going to be talking about here is normal maps and mass maps. So this is an example of the our, some of our assets and making sure that your normal maps and your mass maps are set up as secondary textures. So again, this is examples of we have our animated character, we have a tile map thing, and then just an individual sprite by itself. So this is sort of how you want to have these set up as when you're getting ready to put them into the editor. And then here is just sort of a breakdown for some of you who may be unfamiliar. This is what like these assets actually look like when you break them down into their individual pieces. So the animated character isn't actually one whole thing. It's each piece and part of the character separated out that has its own normal map and mass map. And so that's what you use when you bring it into the game. With the tile maps, you can see sort of how the normal map was set up, the mass maps down here with the red, uh, using the red channel. And then for the barrel itself, you can see map, the normal map and the mass maps. This is just to give you a sense of what your assets should sort of look like as you're getting ready to take them into the editor. And then uh, for normal map information, normal maps in a 3D game and a 2D game function the exact same. So there's no reason to worry about if you've done something in a 3D uh, model like Blender or something. It still works the same in a 2D. Uh, again, you can get more information on normal maps uh, through the documentation on Unity's website. Or again, I'm going to promote it the whole time, the ebook. It's got a lot of inf useful information there for you. Um, and here are, again, we're talking about normal maps. Here are some examples. Like, there's a lot of different ways to get a normal map into or for your asset. We, they've listed a bunch out here. Obviously, if you make it in a 3D space, like Blender, you can bring it in, and it will be a normal map that will function correctly. There are special generators like uh, Sprite Eliminator that can help you generate a normal map on your own. If you want to, you can also manually paint them in. So. Some of these, again, you need to look at what your team's sort of skill set is, what their strengths are, and also what your uh, resources are. So depending on what you need, what a, depending on your resources and all that, that'll dictate sort of which one of these you want to use. Some of them are more time consuming, some of them are a little faster. But again, just look at what works best for your team, again, to get the best normal map possible. And then here's an example they just wanted to show of doing sort of the color sampling method. This is basically going in 
And to create your color map, you're sampling it from different sections of the image. So getting the head on the top and applying the normal map on the bottom there. So again, they're just showing some, they're showing, the team is trying to show different ways that you can generate your normal map. And then here's an example of the Sprite Illuminator tool. Again, this is a useful tool if you want to generate normal maps this way. And again, this is just really quickly going through it. Uh, I'd suggest if you're interested in this, check out, it, check out their website, get a lot of information on it. And then here's one of the more time consuming, but it can also, this is one of the more time consuming methods. So this is basically going in and hand painting each uh, channel and each part of the normal map and then putting it all together to create the final result. This can lead to really good results, but again, sort of thinking about that resource and return on investment for this, you may be able to do this, but if it takes you three, four months to generate one of these, that may not be good for your dev cycle. So again, all of these different ways, think about them as you're going through to make sure they can work for your team and your game. And then here's an example of us doing some hand painting uh, normal maps if, that we use. This is one of the pillars that holds the torchlight in the game. So again, this is just showing ru quickly sort of what's involved with it and what they did. Again, this, this, this works for your team. This is a great way to do it. Um, and one thing they wanted to call out is when you're uh, bringing in your normal map textures, uh, or when you're bringing them in, make sure it, the texture type is set to normal map. You want to do this for atlasing to make sure that, again, it's getting the best. This setting sometimes is missed or not set properly. Again, this will help with your uh, atlasing for uh, your sprites. And then mass maps, for those that don't know, uh, mass maps is basically a way to blend or for light to blend in a 2D space. Basically, in the you have your 2D light on there uh, on the left, and then you come over in the red is the map is the actual map itself. And what's that saying is when light hits it, at when it hits these areas, do this type of blending for it. And so this is a good way, as you can see, there's the barrel with the value, but you can see with the character here, this character has a nice mass map. And so as the light's moving around, it gives it sort of that extra polish, extra look that, again, the spread, without the mass map, that image looks really nice. But when you add the mass map to it, it makes it pop and seem that much more like nicer and professional. And then, yeah, here's an example of our hero character with its mass map on. Again, this is something, and for this one, this is sort of the calling out how to do what's called hero lighting. So again, this is using mass map to help your character sort of stand out in the game. When you're thinking about it, you want your playable character to be visible at all times. And so a mass map, again, can help with that because if it has this nice glow and reaction with the light, as players are moving around into the game world and doing other things, they can at a glance tell where their character is and go from there. So again, this is something it's very good for readability. And again, going to that like high quality professional look. And then, yeah, here we have sort of how it looks in the editor, applying it, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and then just setting up the channels and all that. And again, it's just saying that this is what's going to happen. It's going to be additive. You can change whether uh, what type of ha what happens when the light hits the mass map. But again, see, it's giving. You have the mass map around it, and then you have your character looking very nice and having that glow to it. And then here's an example of doing it with props. Again, the different col colors are just different channels would dictate what direction the light is coming from. But yeah, this is, it's not just for your hero character that you want to use mass maps. You want to look at trying to do it everywhere that you can, again, to just make everything sort of stand out and have that better visibility for the players. And then here, yeah, the texture type. Uh, another sort of those settings that people miss sometimes that the team wanted to call out, make sure this is set to default. Uh, just again, to make sure that everything's working properly and it again helps with your sprite atlasing. A lot of the sort of tips and tricks here are to help you get, it, get the most like out of your game and not have any chugging behind the scenes from like processes or bad atlasing or things like that. And then here we have, so on the left, we have an example of normal maps. For those that haven't seen normal maps in action before, the the, the rockway there, that is a flat image, but with the normal map, it gives it that effect of looking uh, like it's got depth to it. And again, it makes it seem that much more nice and polished or realistic that players get a sense of it. And here you can see the, on the right, you can see the mass map applied to the character. As he moves back and forth from the torchlight, you can see where all those, that yellow was painted in the previous slides. You can see how it's reacting to the light there and giving again, the player character stands out more. And even like the barrels you can see as the light is moving around. 
And then now that we've kind of gone over how you set up your assets before you get them in the game, or into the editor rather, let's sort of go over some of the things in the editor you can do. Um, I've been sort of talking about this a little bit, but I, the team really wants to bring this up. Lighting and shadowing in a 2D space is really important. Again, for making it look really nice and stand out from the many, many 2D games that are out there, but also just to help with playability and performance. Uh, like the image on the left, you the way that's lit, it gives a very nice somber feeling as you're like running through a forest and that gives you that nice sort of nice, comfortable feeling. You wouldn't want that type of lighting in the image on the right where there's a giant dragon shooting fire at you. Again, you want to use the light and shadow to sort of set the mood. In this one, it's a lot darker and sort of like scary sensation. And you also have to be careful about not overusing light. If the dragon's breath is too much or it's too big a light, it'll wash out the screen. And so when that happens, all a player will see will be a blinding screen of fire that they can't do anything with. Again, it's just looking at finding out what works best and what gives your game that sort of like nice aesthetic to it. Um, one thing that the team has found some sometimes is missed is ambient lighting. So in our farm simulator, they've put in an ambient, an ambient light with a sort of low intensity and a certain color, again, to fit the mood of the game. But even if you have a bunch of lights in your game, like a torch, a spotlight, things like that, you still want some ambient light. You're nev there's never a time when something is completely dark and you don't want completely dark spaces in your game. If you go outside, even on a pitch black night, there's some light so you can see some of what's around you. And that's the same in the game. You never want the player to stumble into a completely pitch black area because then it just seems like unfinished or like something's broken. Uh, and one cool trick that they did for this demo was they basically simulated a sun and to do the day night cycle. So in a 3D space, you can just put a sun up and it's easy to go. Uh, in a 2D space, they had to be a little more creative. So what they did was they created a spotlight at an angle and they basically used scripting to say, okay, it's, it's the, this is the sun and it'll rotate around the 2D space and the light will hold the position and then it'll basically simulate that day night cycle. So as it goes, it basically changed from like noon to late, late, uh, late afternoon, dark and then morning. Um, this is something <laughs> that they, another sort of setting they wanted to call out was to make sure to set uh, normal maps on your lights to have basically to tell your lights to be, to be affected by normal maps. The image on the left, that is not set. So you see how it just sort of has that washed out feel. It doesn't look like there's any depth. On the right there, as the light moves around, it gives the sense of the bush. This is another one of those little settings that sometimes can get missed that again, just makes your product look a little unfinished. So yeah, another thing they wanted to call out. Um, and then here was a trick that the team did for creating shadows. So using this barn, they're basically doing the sort of negative lighting. By setting the blending style here to multiply, uh, it basically turns it into a shadow. So instead of adding light as it is on the left there, it's mul the multiply causes it to create this basically fake shadow. And this is a great way to sort of on a, in a 2D space, fake that shadow. And then later you're gonna see how they use this technique along with the fake sun to create that full day-night cycle for everything in the farm simulator. Uh, another type of shadowing is the blob shadow. It's a blob. Uh, and again, this is great for, you can see on the pig there, it's just like a little blob that goes under that creates a shadow. This is a great way, again, if you don't have a lot of resources to do these crazy fake suns things, this is something you can do that, get, again, makes it look really nice. Like that pig right there, without that shadow, it just seems like a flat sticker. But that shadow, along with the normal maps and mass maps, gives it that extra pop and just makes it look that much nicer. Um, and then here is for uh, infinite shadow projection. So in the real world, if we were standing outside in the dark and I shined a light at you, the shadow would go infinitely away from you. And so with this, you're able to simulate that. So you apply this uh, to your barrel game object. And then now when light hits it and like it's already set on the character too, you can see that the shadow is going infinitely back. Again, this really fits with what people expect in, in a night scenario. If a light shines off of this, it'll go infinitely behind you. So again, this is a great tool to again, keep adding to that, making everything look more professional, high end. But the infinite shadow is not perfect. And so sometimes it won't work for everything. The image on the left is with the trees using the infinite shadow. 
So as you can see, some of the shadow behavior doesn't look 100% natural going through each other. So the team found a technique of basically using a blob shadow on the trees to simulate what you would see in a forest without having the negative effects of the infinite shadows. And then so what they did with that was they then linked, they created vectors for each of the blob shadows and linked it to the sun. So now as in the scripting language, as the sun is rotating around in the space, it's, it's saying, okay, adjust the vectors based on that. So if the sun's up here, make sure the shadow vector is over here, basically away from it. And again, a great technique as the day-night cycle is going to be like, hey, that looks like it's a day-night cycle. And then here they did a similar thing, like I was saying with the negative light shadows. So the team created four sort of variants of each of them to basically mimic the key points of the day. So like middle of the night, evening, afternoon, middle of the day. And so they have these different shadows, these different negative like preform shadows or preform lights to create the shadow. And they use the vectors again to be able to follow the sun. And so here's just an example of them set setting it up and basically linking those shadows from the barn and from the house to the sun to again follow in that. And then here you can here it is in action. And as you can see that like it, you have to make sure if you're doing this technique that you have enough transitions that it actually blends together and it's not like super choppy where it goes from a huge shadow, little shadow, huge shadow, little shadow. So yeah, with this you can see that it's going, it looks, and it looks again realistic and it makes the game feel more real. As you're playing in the game, oh, it's getting dark, it's come, becoming morning. Um, another thing that it's just wants to call it is always be thinking about adding more visual effects to your games. So even with all these lighting and shadowings, that's all great, but there should be even more. You can see the image on the left, the rays of light coming through the trees. Again, that's just a little extra bit of polish that can make the game seem better. In this one, it's kind of hard to tell on the screen, but you can see that there's clouds floating slowly there. So basically doing fake clouds, dust, like if you're in a desert setting, having a bit of dust sort of going through the air, obfuscating some of the lights, that's a great thing. And like if you're doing rain, similar things, just think about these effects, like whatever you're seeing or whatever the level is, look at it and be like, if a player was standing there, what would they expect to see? Would they think there should be some sort of extra effect here, a little bit of dust there, a little bit of extra lighting there? Just think about that as you're going through your process. And then, yeah, we've been talking about all the separate pieces of the day-night cycle. And so again, here's sort of all the collections of everything, of the different vectors from the, tr the blob shadows in the trees, the negative lighting on the barn and all the different assets, and then the scripting to say, okay, follow the sun as it goes around to mimic that day-night cycle for everything. And then, yeah, here it is in action. And you can see that, that really give, this really gives a good sense. Even just standing here, it feels like, okay, this seems like a real day-night cycle and it sort of fits with what you would expect with how the trees look, the lights kicking on, it's dust sitting there, the shadows getting a little bit smaller in certain places. And this is, and then yeah, even with the lights kicking on, it's really nice too. So yeah, like this is, think about these with your game and you can make something that a farm game, which when you think about it is, oh, that's kind of a basic game, but this makes it look really nice and stand out from many games at a convention like GDC. And then here's just a few more, oh, ear thing is getting screwed. Uh, a few more things at different types of like tips and for helps your performance. One big thing to, that the team wants everybody to think about is how your game performs. Like even if your game looks amazing and the most beautiful thing, if it runs at 10 frames a second or it takes a behemoth of a machine to run it, players aren't gonna see it. Nobody like play, especially if it's on a mobile game or on a handheld or something like that, players wanna be able to get in and start playing and enjoy the visuals. So, you need to balance, again, what you're doing with your lighting, with your shadowing, with what your resources and your team budget will allow. And then these, so the demo that I showed and is uh, a still work in progress, and they're also adding new features to it as we're implementing new features. So these are a few of the upcoming ones. So like the soft lighting for infinite shadows and then like a debugger. So the team, this isn't just like, okay, the team has made this simulator and they're done. It's like, no, they're constantly trying to improve, add to it, and uh, make sure that this is valuable for all of users like you to get the most out of and learn the most from it. And then yeah, just a huge thank you to everybody. Uh, uh, this QR code should take you to the ebook. I highly suggest checking it out. It's great for everybody. It's a lot of useful tips. 
The team is really excited about this. As I said, the farm simulator will be available on the asset store later this year. Uh, if you want, uh, reach out to me or come grab me while I'm at the booth. I'll be happy to talk to you, answer any questions I can. It's my dev advocate job to do that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, thank you all for taking the time to watch this, and I hope you got a lot out of this for your 2D games. Cool.